New York Times reports the modern automation robots everyone was dreading are already here. You can even get a robot to do your housework. Not only to do your housework, but from what the discussion we were having with family members saying that uh, they could even protect your house. They can even secure the house. And if anybody enters that's not supposed to, they can even uh, uh, secure the premises, if you understand what I'm saying. And then I said, well, what happens if some grandma comes in to water the plants and, uh, you know, the, ro the robot mistakes her for, for some uh, intruder and uh, starts attacking the grandma? What happens then? You know, all such types of scenarios can go wrong. My goodness. So there's uh, interest soaring during the pandemic and helped create relatively low cost automation systems. Digit uh, managed to gather a mega crowd, even here in the convention center, they said, full of robot enthusiasts. A humanoid warehouse worker, Digit, walked uh, upright on goat-like legs and grabbed bins from a shelf with his muscular arms made of aerospace-grade aluminum. He then placed the boxes on an assembly line and returned to the shelf to look for more. Ben Ryder, Howe of New York Times, reports. The crowd gathered at Promat, the leading trade show for the manufacturing and supply chain industry in the U.S., raising their cell phones and watched a little apprehensive at first, wondering if at some point the robot would go crazy and fall, but that never happened. Digit made by Oregon-based Agility Robotics is a kind of technology people have been worried about for generations, a machine with the strength and dexterity to rival our own and the ability to take over jo our jobs or much worse so you can imagine then artificial intelligence chat gpt hit the internet and suddenly the fear is of something smarter than humans rather than something stronger in power automation however still has a way to go it may not be ready to take over amazon's warehouse just yet but the long-awaited robot revolution has already begun which has been greatly accelerated by the pandemic and the boom in e-commerce. Machines like the Digit are already uh, ready to uh, take on a huge chunk of physical work from operating forklifts to doing laundry. The Digit. Ron Kislinger thinks it's, a good, uh, it's all good. An engineer who has pioneered automation for some of the world's largest retailers, including Amazon and Walmart, he is passionate about the potential of robots to improve the quality of life for workers. Robots free people from boredom, repetition, physical strain, and productivity limits that can put their jobs at risk, he believes. He also believes that Americans have a bias against automation because of moves like movies like The Terminator, preventing them from adapting to technology in ways that are both beneficial and inevitable. Well, the worst thing is uh, these robots taking over human jobs. And uh, humans can't make a living to support themselves and their families. Kisslinger, 56, is currently a consultant to companies hoping to increase automation. And his services are in high demand, known for his ability to see the big picture and not just a warehouse full of whirling machines, but an entire global automation landscape. He's raw and methodical and can be a bit of a robot himself in his personal manner. He's often hired to diagnose problems and advise a board or CEO on what the real situation is. In Kisslinger's opinion, the world is on the brink of a massive, of massive changes when it comes to the presence of robots at work. I don't think people really understand where we are, he said. It's like they're looking away. The use of robots by large firms Retailers and goods carriers accelerated significantly after 2019. According to the Association for Advanced Automation, orders for robots in North America rose 42% during the pandemic after essentially remaining flat over the previous five years. The shift has taken place largely out of sight in a mess of windowless warehouses across the American Southeast and Midwest, helping companies avoid Ignition, uh, uh, igniting the taboo against replacing human workers with machines, some are reluctant to even discuss automation. Americans have long felt a strange ambivalence towards automation. The country that invented such job killers as the dishwasher and machines in general also produced Philip K. Dick's, Dick and James Cameron, 
artists whose dystopian visions helped spawn an enduring anxiety about robots. In recent years, significant resources have been devo devoted to making robots more profitable and is paying off. More companies are racing to solve the problems that traditionally come with automation, and many are succeeding. Interest soared during the pandemic and helped create relatively low-cost automation systems that companies can deploy very quickly, said Ash Sharma, managing director, consultant to Interact Analysis, which researches trends in automation. He said, we've seen billions of dollars invested in this area. However, the use of robots in most countries remains relatively low, suggesting that there is a difficulty in understanding their true social impact. Ron Kissinger, the United States ranked ninth in robot usage density in 2021, up from seventh in 2020, according to the International Federation of Robotics. By contrast, in East Asia, there, where an aging population has long raised fears of a labor shortage, robots have already spread rapidly. The U.S. has its own problems with aging workers, especially in heavy industries like manufacturing, where baby boomers make up a large part of the workforce. The pandemic has put somewhere between one and a half to three million people out of work, said Joseph Campbell, senior director of marketing at Universal Robots. He said many boomers who plan to work past 65 said age 62 is okay, but after 65 is scary. If a transition to a robotic workforce is underway, management is likely to fall to a small group of industry veterans like Kissinger, Kissinger. And almost 20 years ago, he was one of the few robot advocates who actually built the paradigm and seeing it all today through his eyes means you can see where he might be headed next. He has his concerns about people, not robots. At Promat, the exhibition with these robots, which took place over four days in March at Chicago's McCormick Place Convention Center. Digit was the uh, undisturbed star, the undisputed star. The scene looked for the most part like a kid-friendly sci-fi film, a robot bazaar uh, where machines move slowly, said excuse me, and performed limited tasks like picking up and dropping objects. So it even talks to you. He knows if there's a person in front of him and say excuse me, move out of the way. Now, however, some robots were inside plexiglass cages. You don't want to go in there, said Mr. Kissinger, pointing to one. This thing is going to kick your butt, he said. Promats, 51,000 attendees, a happy crowd of well-groomed middle-aged white men with black backpacks and fancy sneakers, scurried from booth to booth to visit, um, like visitors to a zoo. The crowd included buyers from major retail and consumer goods companies, as well as entrepreneurs and engineers. At a booth for a robot that was tasked with collecting objects, I told one of the few women there that I was writing an article about a guy named Ron. Oh, really, she said, looking tired. There are a lot of Rons here. Okay. Mr. Kissinger moved in this environment like a celebrity entering a restaurant. He could barely walk without being greeted. Welcome to Ron's world, a bystander whispered to me over the roar of micro-engines. Ron is the tough of automation, said another Mr. Kissinger, uh, uh, another Mr. Kissinger bustling at the uh, comment. I don't like to talk about myself, she said somewhat gruffly. He had agree agreed with the New York Times to share his passion and concerns about automation for what is best for humanity, quote unquote. Kissinger, who grew up in western Pennsylvania and was a tight end baseball player for the University of Pittsburgh, majored in computer science in college. Practice was at 5 in the morning, so he would wake up at 3.30, go to the computer lab. After graduating in 1989, he went into the automotive world where, starting as a control engineer, he spent 23 years working for Chrysler, Ford, and Honda. Auto companies were among the first to embrace automation, replacing humans with crude, often dangerous robots on assembly lines. In the 1980s, robots were a bad example of how the American auto industry was thinking about the future, but in a way, industry experts believed it has brought robotics back. Everything we sold was to remove labor, said Universal, Universal Robots Campbell. Everything had to replace a worker. That was the impression 
and at the time it was the truth. So robots replace human workers. That's the truth. For Kissinger, who now lives near Myrtle Beach, Sacramento, working for a Japanese car company, was a formative experience. He admired what he saw as Japanese culture's disciplined approach to complex problems and wrote a thesis on the different work environments at Honda and Ford. In 2011, he moved into an industry that was even more aggressively trying to automate industrial spaces. Gas. In food distribution, at CNS Wholesale Grocers, the nation's largest grocery distributor, he designed a warehouse in which robots moving at 50 kilometers an hour filled pallets destined for supermarkets. 50 kilometers an hour. I mean, you know, not even a car. That's a fast car. Okay? I mean, you can imagine humans can't run that fast. The robots were going 50 kilometers an hour. CNS is a little owned company that plays a major role in transporting a large portion of the country's food. If it belongs on a supermarket shelf, it's probably passed through a CNS warehouse right now, the company based in New Hampshire said. Under Kissinger, CNS pioneered warehouses with so few people that it came close to going lights out, which meant the ability to operate in the dark minus human eyes. Can you imagine? No humans. Today, Kissinger says the lights will now go out completely because there won't be any humans. As we walked around the Promat site, he spotted robots closing the gap with humans and in some cases surpassing them. In general, he himself is not easily impressed. He called the robot trade show full of pieces of the future, but a lot of it makes my brain hurt, he said. Still somewhat dismayed, he pointed out a few important points. A robotic hand with a kind of grip that approximates the flexibility of human fingers. An optical sensor that had made progress in distinguishing the glow in a plastic wrap from an object it contained. A sorter who excelled at finding the ideal geometry inside a cardboard box for objects of different shapes, be it toothpaste, tuna, or a teddy bear. Kissinger seemed more interested in explaining what robot robots cannot do. As a former computer programmer, he's no doubt unfazed by ChatGBT, the AI-powered chat box. People are looking to be the holy grail, he said, but it's only as good as the people who program it. At another booth, he watched a cobot, short for collaborative robot, place items inside an autonomous moving robot that looked like a zippered humanoid. Cobots are supposed to be harmless, but the Japanese manufacturer of this machine, Fanuc, a longtime supplier of robotic arms to automakers, had put it in a cage anyway. Its squishy octopus tentacle-like appendages hypnotized you into watching them, but just as we started watching, one of the robot's hands failed to catch a box of cotton swabs and dropped it on the floor, causing the machine to go through above. Can you imagine? You see, Kissinger said, asked, the cobot automatically stopped so that one could enter the cage and remove the now dangerous swabs. Kissinger did not call this a flaw, but an incidence, a kind of routine error that makes human intervention inevitable. It shows why turning the lights out in e-commerce will be a struggle. They probably taught the robot how to do this thousands of times in their lab, he said. I've seen robots do badly, he told me. In a warehouse owned by a company he was consulting, a robot practically crushed a worker, breaking several of his bones. Oh my God. A technician had accidentally disabled its security features. Human error causes problems, not, not robot error, Kissinger stressed, noting that plane crashes have fallen sharply since autopilot was introduced. The robot does what it's told to do, no more, no less. People think of the Terminator, he added, but those things can't happen when there is a security protocol, he said. Safety concerns have made cobots one of the fastest growing segments of industrial automation. A cobot can hit you, but it cannot hurt you, Kissinger said. He knows you're there, it senses that you are there, and stops. In 2018, before the pandemic unleashed a flood of pressures on companies in automate to automate, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, commissioned a task force with a project on the work of the future. The team concluded that no convincing evidence suggests that 
technological advances are driving us towards the future with unemployment. Instead, he expected more jobs than the number of workers who would fall, have to fill them. More jobs than the workers have to fill them. However, he argued the effects of robotics and automation on workers will not be entirely favorable. In other words, they will take over humans' jobs. The pandemic exposed the vulnerabilities that came from the destruction of productive capacity in the United States, said one of the task force's co-chairs, Elizabeth Reynolds, a lecturer at MIT, who then served as special assistant for manufacturing and economic development at the National Economic Council. She said, automation will let us make uh, the transition into an advanced manufacturing center while helping the market with its long-term labor shortage. Another co-chair, Professor David Mindel, agreed, calling the recent changes potential positive for workers, but only if the widespread integration of robots leads to the creation of new industries and new kinds of jobs. 60% of the jobs in the Labor Department database did not exist in 1940, Mindel said. You know, web designers, message therapists, dog walkers, aerodynamics engineers, we need to make sure we continue to create these kinds of jobs. At Promat, Kissinger and I finally settled on Digit. We watched him work on his own, such as bending down to pick up a bucket near the floor. We don't want people who bend down not to be able to stand up, Kissinger said. That's where the injuries happen, in the back, in the neck. However, the machine moved slowly, slower than most people. Kissinger studied his movement, seemingly impressed. A lot of algorithms contribute to all of this, he said. People make these moves without even thinking. But he adds, for there to be an improvement over humans, machines don't need to be faster. And this is, I've translated for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.